day two community, y'all. So yesterday, Mike did such a good job talking to us about why we need to show up for community, right? So my job is to talk about uh, communities that grow up. Um, when I look back on my life, there have been a few times where um, the church showed up for me in such a way that I felt the presence of Jesus, right? Um, my husband and I, we uh, suffered from infertility for five years. I can't even tell you the number of ways the church showed up for us in that. And then when we had all the babies, they showed up again with diapers and formula and all the things. Um, and then when my husband had a seizure, I mentioned that to you before, and there was a four-month period, three-month period where he couldn't drive. And my dad did take him to work. I told you that. But there was a group of 200 men at our church that made a spreadsheet that, um, that with their phone numbers where he could call them at any moment to take him to Starbucks, to take him to get a haircut, to take him anywhere he wanted to go. And I think when we experience community like that, it shapes us, right? And we see the love of God in a new way. So today we're going to talk about three pictures of what a healthy community looks like. So the first one um, is a body. Uh, the second one is a slide. And the third one is a cake. They are seemingly unrelated, but hopefully by the end you'll be like, I totally get it. Okay, so let's start with the body. I'm going to be in 1 Corinthians 12. It says this in... Uh, uh, chapter 12, verse 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but in all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we are all given the spirit to drink. Even so, the body, the body is not made up of one part, but many. So a couple things we need to draw from this passage. Um, believers make up the body of Christ, right? That's the metaphor. And it's one body, but it has many parts, right? So like I have a hand, I have eyes, I have ears, and all the things have to work and do their function, right? My eyes have to see, my ears have to hear, but it also has to work together. So like if my arm goes rogue, that's going to be a rough day for me, right? I have to, my body has to work together so that it can function how I need it to be. The next section, I didn't include it because it was really long, but it was like the ear can't be jealous of the, of the eye because they both have to do their part, right? They have to learn to work together. So the next verse, verse 18, says this. But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. So the idea here again, many parts, they all have their own function, but they have to function together like a body. So my first plan when I was thinking, how do I illustrate this? I was, my, my plan was just like to Google a bunch of medical things and basically get a medical degree via Google and then share with you some brilliant insights um, that I had gotten from the internet. That plan failed. Um, so I called my sister who's a nurse. And here's what she told me. She, she, we were talking about how your body is so intricate and each system affects the other systems, right? So here's what she said. Um, your potassium level has to be between 3.5 and 5. Not a big gap there, right? We get potassium from food. Um, if your kidneys aren't working properly, you get too much potassium in your blood. If you get too much potassium in your blood, that causes arrhythmia, which can be fatal right? Don't worry about the potassium in your blood. It's doing just fine. But what I'm saying is every single system affects the other system. So it is with the body of Christ. Every single member is connected and affects the other members. Um, after I called my sister, we called her friend, Dr. Herman. Um, he's a cardiologist at Memorial Herman, you know, the one with the big blue thing on top. Well, sometimes it's blue. It depends. Um, and he had a little message of encouragement for you. So watch Dr. Herman. What's up, Mustangs? Hey, it's just your friendly neighborhood cardiologist, Dr. Daniel Herman over here, just down the road from you guys over at Memorial Herman. So y'all, we're doing the big time work in the cath lab and in the hospital, trying to keep people's hearts healthy. But there's a lot of parallels to what we're doing in here and what the church is doing in the community, trying to keep people healthy mentally and spiritually. There's a lot of overlap. It's hard to be healthy here 
if you're not healthy in your mind and soul. So go out there, y'all, and make a difference. Dedicate yourself each day to making this planet even more beautiful and get out there and be somebody. Go get them, Mustangs. He's the best. Okay, so let me tell you the backstory to that. Um, that man does 12 to 15 procedures a day. Um, so it was 8.30, I left D groups, hadn't gotten the video yet, so I text my sister and I'm like, hey, have you seen Dr. Herman? And she's like, yeah, he's doing a procedure. I was like, oh, okay, well, is, you know, we're gonna get the video, we're not gonna get it, it's totally fine, whatever, he's saving lives. Um, and then I got the video at 12.16 a.m. So he did that in the parking lot of Memorial Herman for you that late. So I hope you're encouraged. Um, the next, uh, or how do we apply that, right? How do we, how do we work as we distinctly function in ourselves, right, and use our gifts, but also work together. A couple things. We need to know our lane, right? We need to know what is my part and what is someone else's part and what am I supposed to be doing and when. I have seen more chaos caused. Well, think of a, like I-10. I'm on I-10 every single day. The chaos is not caused by the people who go straight in their lane at 80 miles an hour. That's what we do, right? The chaos is caused by the person who's switching lanes or going 45 miles an hour or looking at an accident, or, right? The people who know their lane and they do their thing, the whole thing functions just right when we do that. The second part is we encourage others in their lanes, right? So, hey, you're doing this thing. You're doing great at it. And we don't have to compete. We don't have to compare and compete because God has created us uniquely but to work together. Um, we need to look for places that we can build up the body, right? Look for places where we can be helpful. That's one thing I love about this community. Last night I was putting um, drinks in the cooler for D groups, which is kind of a big job because there's lots of drinks and you can't like really shake them or, you know, the whole, that, that situation. So I'm like carefully putting them in and someone came in and immediately said, a, a kid, where can I start? Where do I help? And that's the way things work here. And I absolutely love that. So look for a place where you can help no matter where you are. Um, and then look for places where you have complementary gifts. If you know you have a weakness, find somebody who has a strength, right? And work with that person. The second um, picture is a slide. Um, so I'm going to be in 1 Corinthians 12, 24 through 26. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Here we have that same picture again, right? We have the body working together, and when one part of it suffers, you all suffer. If you have, a, if you've ever had a hangnail, it's like the tiniest thing, but can ruin your day, right? Because you're suffering. Your one, that one little thing is suffering on you. The same is true with the body of Christ. We suffer together. We rejoice together. Um, a couple other things in this passage. God has put the body together. So if you're frustrated with community, talk to God about it, right? Because it was His idea, and He has put it together. No division, equal concern. Every part cares for the other. So let's talk about the slide. This story is kind of involved, so I need you to stay with me. Okay, um, so this particular day, if you have four children, um, sometimes a lot of fun things happen on one day, right? So it was fairy, this was September 29th. It was fairy tale day. That's my son, Ethan. He's dressed as Peter Pan. This is important later. These are my girls. This was admittedly not taken on uh, Mini Mustangs Day, but after they uh, received special pom-poms from Mrs. Young, because she's awesome. Okay, so it was Mini Mustang Day and Fairy Tale Day, right? With me so far. Okay, so we live far away. It was when we dropped the girls off at Mini Mustang Camp, I then had the boys, and the girls were going to perform later, right? So we live in Katy, don't have time to go home, so we decided to go to Chick-fil-A. I also convinced my friend to go to Chick-fil-A. She also has four children, two girls, two boys. So together, we have eight children, Four girls, four boys. The four girls are at Mini Mustang, which was amazing, by the way. Love you if you participated in that. Okay. The four boys are with us at Chick-fil-A. So I order my spicy chicken sandwich and diet lemonade, and I sit down. My kids get there. They go to the play place. Obviously, that's why we're at Chick-fil-A. Then the food comes. All four boys are in the play place. You still with me? Yes. Okay. Two, my two come out because they have food. My friend's kids weren't even eating, so they continue to play. Everything's fine. 
A little later, her two boys come out, my friend, Laurel is her name, um, and her two boys, there's like kind of a commotion. And I know something is not right, but I do not know yet what that thing is. Then I quickly learned that a friend, a toddler, has pooped on the slide, and I know, I know. I'm sorry you're hearing this, but I had to live it. Um, so then her two kids then slid down the slide. So they come out, you're in a restaurant, mind you, and so they have not their own poop on them. And so their mother is a good mother, and she immediately gets to work, right? Like she's, she's got wipes, I don't even know where they came from. She's, you know, she's doing things. I'm still eating my spicy chicken sandwich, because I'm a good friend. And I was like, oh, oh I'm so sorry, that, what a bummer. Now, mind you, I got her to come to Chick-fil-A. Remember that part? So she is, she's, you know, handling it. And I'm like, you know what? I have Peter Pan pants in the car. Let me go, remember Peter Pan day? You never know what's gonna be in the minivan. So I go get the Peter Pan pants. She has a t-shirt in her car. So she goes and gets that. She fashions the t-shirt into shorts somehow. And, um, and then her other kid has Peter Pan pants. At some point during my enjoying of the chicken sandwich, she looks at me and says, should we check your kids? And I was like, I th no, I think they're fine. They stand up, they also are covered in, <laughs> in poop. And now I've given away the Peter Pan pants. See the stress, right? So I, I clean, probably didn't do a good a as good a job as Laurel, but I clean them off. I do have one more pair of shorts in the Magic Minivan, but then my youngest, he um, just had to wear his poop pants. So you can see in this photo, child on the left, Peter Pan pants. Next one, that's a t-shirt that he's wearing in shorts. The next one, poop pants, and Ethan is wearing the one pair of clean shorts that we actually had. So I call my husband, because we still gotta come back to the game, right? And I'm like, hey man, just, I don't wanna talk about it, but I need you to grab all the shorts you can find. <laughs> then we did talk about it, and he was like, that is disgusting, and I don't ever wanna hear about that again, which is why I have to tell you, because I can't talk to him about it. So. I want you to know, the best part of this story is, I look up in the chaos, and I see Dr. Price is there eating Chick-fil-A with his son and some friends, I think. And so, I go over there. I've worked at Houston Christian for not that long. August 1st was my first day. So I go over there, I'm like, hello, how are you? And he said, I have one question for you. Was your kid the culprit? <laughs> I was like, no. I mean, could have been any day. Could have been. But today, actually, no. So if you doubt me, feel free to ask him. So why do I tell you this? Because forever, when you see a slide, I want you to think to yourself, whatever we go through, we go through together. Right? In our case, it was poop. In your case, hopefully, not. Okay. So how do we do that, though? How do we rejoice with those who are rejoicing? I thought y'all might have a tough time coming back after that one. Um, how do we rejoice with those who rejoice and suffer with those who suffer? First of all, I think we're pretty good at suffering with people who suffer. I think we can lean into that, right? We know um, what that feels like, and so we naturally do that. I think it might be harder to rejoice with the rejoicing. Maybe they get into college and you haven't. Maybe they make a team and you don't. Maybe they make a better grade than you, or whatever it is that they have that you want. Sometimes it's a little harder. So. Part of community is putting ourselves aside, right? And then um, being able to suffer with the suffering and rejoice with the rejoicing. Um, we also have to be close enough to know when someone is rejoicing and suffering. And that's part of showing up in community on both sides, the person who is suffering or rejoicing and the person who is doing that with them. So we, gotta, we have to lean in and hear. If we're on our phones or we're so packed, our schedules, we're going to miss those opportunities for community. Okay, the last one, healthy community is like a cake. I promise this one isn't gross. Um, I'm gonna read Acts 2, 42. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. So the idea here is a lot like what they mentioned in the morning show. All good communities have some, Christian communities, have particular ingredients that we have to pay attention to, right? So we see those in this verse. The apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer, right? So the apostles' teaching. What were the apostles' teaching? 
the resurrection of Jesus, right? And the hope that we have because of the resurrection of Jesus and many other things. But that's the main thing. So for us, this is God's word. Our community has to be built on God's word. It is our anchor. It is where we look. Um, it is where we find hope. And it's, it's how we encourage each other, right? Um, the second one, fellowship. Listen to this quote. This is about the early church. That's the context of this passage. Even though their fellowship included material goods, which it definitely did, its primary reference must be to the ideas, attitudes, purpose, mission, and activity of the Holy Spirit. Imagine if we were aligned on all those fronts, right? That creates amazing community when you're able to share in those things. Um, breaking of bread. So this would be both the Lord's Supper and just eating together, right? Relationships are built on shared experience. Food is one of those very ordinary things, like my Chick-fil-A story. Me and Laurel, I assure you, we will never forget that day in our friendship, right? And relationships are built in those very ordinary places at your lunch table. Uh, and then prayer. Prayer is an expression of dependence, and when the people of God really feel their need, you will find them flocking together to pray. A, neg a neglected prayer meeting indicates very little recognition of one's true need. When we pray, we are recognizing our need for God, and then when we're doing that together, we recognize our need for each other, which is the best place that a community can be. So, um, I want to show you my friend Sarah. Um, she's the cutest. So Sarah is, Sarah Bramlett is her name. She um, is a teacher, and she has three boys. Her three kids often get in trouble with my four children. Um, and so one day, she, she, she obviously is busy. She has all those things happening. It was one of her kids' parties, and she went to order a cake, and it was super expensive. And her husband was like, I think you should do it. Like, just go to Michael's, get the cake things, and you, you create it. So n not only did she do that, but she was so good at it. She does have a degree in sculpture, so I do think she had a leg up on, like, the rest of us. But um, not only was she good at it, but she is now sold out. I looked at her website yesterday. You can't order any more cakes for her in 2023. You have to be, like, a year ahead. So I've never had a Bramlett cake because I've never been a year ahead for anything. But um, these are some of her creations. The middle one she made for J.J. Watt's wife because, you know, she's doing that. Um, so, I'm telling you about Sarah because we did a Bible study, this is hard to explain, a cake-themed Bible study together. So, she did like live cake, cake decorating and I did the Bible study part. And what was interesting is the, the minute the people got their phones out wasn't when she was decorating, wasn't when she was doing anything else, but when she said, I want to tell you my buttercream recipe, everyone got their phones out, got their notepads out. Why? Because they were about to hear the ingredients that then they could recreate her very special buttercream, right? You can't just willy-nilly throw things in. And the same is true with community. We have to really care about the ingredients. We have to watch what's happening with those and pay attention. So is our community built on the right ingredients? Are we building it on God's word? Are we dependent on him in prayer? Are we characterized by sharing carbs and shared time? Do we um, share our experiences together? What ingredients are overdone? What are lacking? These are the things we need to be talking about in our communities, right? So that we have a community that reflects our dependence on God and each other. In conclusion, we have one last picture. I didn't really count it. Um, according to canva.com, this is a redwood forest. Um, and redwood trees are really interesting, and here's why. So the largest redwood tree has a height of 275 feet and a diameter of 36 feet at the base. These trees are enormous. So you would think that they have really deep roots, right? If they're that tall, you would think they have really deep roots, but they don't. Their roots are only 6 to 12 feet deep. And the reason that they withstand, these are some of the oldest forests, the reason that they withstand all the storms and all the things is not because they have deep roots, it's because they have interconnected roots. And I think what we can pull from that is it's not your own strength that matters. It's the strength of your community. When we are interconnected like God has designed us to be, we find that strength in him first and then in each other. Let's be that kind of community. Let's pray. 
Lord, thank you so much for the people in this room. Thank you for the hope we have in you. Thank you that you knew what we need, needed, even when we don't recognize that ourselves. I thank you for this community that has the right ingredients, and I just pray that we would continue to walk in that. I pray that we would love each other well. I pray that you would help us um, to go through what we go through together, and that we would seek you and love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>